Hi, so in this week's video, I'm going to be taking the e-Golf out and maybe the Tesla to show you what public charging is like in 2021. Is now the right time to switch to an EV if you haven't done already. I'm going to face up to my arch nemesis of a charger. I really don't get on well with this company. I'm going to show you why I think Instavolt have got things just right when it comes to public charging. I'm going to show you one perk I really love about being an EV driver in 2021. It won't last, I know, but I just absolutely love it. And finally, I'm going to tell you why or show you why I think most of us shouldn't really bother with Ionity. Anyway, let's get cracking. I know what you're thinking. This is a Tesla, not an e-Golf and I'm at a Tesla supercharger. But it's important for me to show you what Tesla have been doing for over half a decade now. So I come to the charger, I press the button, my charging flap opens, I plug in, it locks and it starts charging. So there's no screen on this charger, uh, there's no tap and go, I just plug in. The charger recognises the car, and then it takes my payment details, if I had to pay, I don't for this, uh, from my account with Tesla. It is the perfect charging system. I hope it shows just how simple charging can be with an electric vehicle. So first stop is a garage where I'm coming face to face with my arch enemy. No, it's not these petrol pumps. They can go extinct on their own. It is this, a Genie Point charger. Let's have a look. So one thing I really don't like about Genie Point is they're not very easy to use. So let's see if we can get started. I'll try with the app first. The other thing that really annoys me is they charge a connection fee, which I don't like. Um, I don't think that's very good. So let's see how we get on. Uh, okay, so I am here. Right, what are they saying? They're saying um, I'm gonna go and connect to two. Sorry, I'm gonna go on connect to three. So it's um, one pound connection fee plus 30p a kilowatt. So let's see what happens. I press charge, start the charge. Uh, I'm gonna go and plug it in. Hang on, back in a sec. Right, let's just grab the CCS connector and we're gonna pull it. Uh, I just need to get that lower thing off. Excuse the, uh, the suds. Um, it's just been washed. I'm sure that's safe to plug in. Let's get that in and let's get back in the car. So let's see if we can start this charge. So it's saying it's connecting and there's a countdown. Wow. So it's saying charging. It's only taking about 20 seconds or so. So maybe I need to rethink that Genie Point is the enemy because that's worked really well. So I'm not that keen on a, on a connection fee. When you, when you plug into a, uh, a, a petrol pump, a diesel or a petrol pump, you don't pay a connection fee. I'd rather pay a little bit more per unit of electricity than pay a connection fee. That's just my own psychology. But this has been really easy. I, I generally don't mind paying for public charging because most of my charging is done at home. Uh, on Octopus Go and that's 5p per kilowatt hour. So paying 30p here is actually, it's actually okay because it is very, very convenient. So I'm kind of taking back what I said about Genie Point. Let's move on. Right, so next stop is a Starbucks and in the car park here are the Instavolt chargers. So I've not even started yet, so I hope this goes well. Otherwise the whole video is out the window. But the reason I like Instavolt is, I'm going to show you now, is they're tap and go. They're fixed pricing, so they're 35p a kilowatt. There's no connection fee. And they also put a lot of their charges um, next to places where you can grab a, a coffee or grab some lunch. And the other thing is they do have innovation within the company. So I don't think a lot, well, I think there's many electric charging companies that don't innovate. Uh, these are the brand new Instavolt chargers. I've not used one of these before, but let me show you, let me show you it. So I like the fact that it's very simple looking. It's also large and it's got a green light on the top, which shows me it's working and available. 
the screens on the new ones are actually really bright. And then what a lot of people don't know is, um, so I'm going to be using this charger and it's going to reach round to there. So that will reach. But if I had a car where um, the charge point was somewhere else, if I pull the top of this, give it a tug, you'll see that it actually moves over so that I can um, adjust the cable and take it to the charging port on the car. So there's not a lot to see here other than um, tap your payment device against the screen. I'm using a payment ring um, and it's started. It's telling me my battery is currently 68% full uh, and it's charging. So to me, this is what public charging is all about. I've turned up, I've plugged the car in and the, by the time I've gone back to the display, it's just said tap and go. So that is only one step difference than the, um, the Tesla charger. I would say, realistically, how hard is it to tap and go? I mean, it's not very hard at all, is it? So, I mean, if, if a Tesla charger is 10 out of 10 for convenience of use, I mean, this has got to be a 9.5, hasn't it? If you're watching this, any charge companies, this is how it should be. Instavolt have got it 100% right with their locations, their machines, and their ease of use. But there is one thing arguably better than an Instavolt charger, especially if you're not in a rush and you live in a proactive city. So I'm gonna show you that next. But before we go, I just wanna show you this screen. It's absolutely amazing. So there we are, there's the car charging. That's what we're um, pulling, 33.7 kilowatts, which is actually very good because the battery's quite full. It's at 74%. Um, it's given me 2.4 kilowatts, so it's 86 pence. It's only eight miles of range, and I've got 22, mile, 22 minutes before the car's full. I'm gonna just stop the charge by pressing that. It's just asking me to confirm. Charging stopped. Will it release easily? Yep. And it gives me a, a summary there as well. Well done, Instavolt. So I just want to quickly interrupt this video to say, if you're enjoying it, please hit the like button and please subscribe. This channel is about electric vehicles, uh, cars, bikes, unicycles, scooters, all sorts. So please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button. Um, back to the video. So this is one of the best things about public charging. It's local councils. I'm in Peterborough, so thank you Peterborough City Council. So what they provide EV drivers with is uh, a dozen or so of these dot dotted about the city. They're all completely free. On top of that, let me show you another bonus. So this car park's not very full today because we're kind of in lockdown still. Um, but it does get really busy and most of the time you can't find anywhere to park. If we look here, I've got two big spaces to choose from, nearly always available as I've mentioned. And then when we go over to the parking uh, payment machine, we see this. So thanks to Peterborough City Council and all other councils doing the same thing, uh, as well as free fuel for my car, it's also free parking. And what's three hours of parking in this car park is actually £4.50. So that is quite a saving. So that means not only am I, uh, whilst shopping, getting the equivalent of a couple of gallons of fuel put in the car, uh, I'm also not paying for parking and I've got a really big car parking space, which is almost, uh, currently, I know things will change, but this space here, is almost exclusively reserved for me every time I come into Peterborough. So last stop is Ionity. Uh, so these have got two vans parked here because they're all being upgraded. So they're fairly new chargers, they've only been here about six months. But it's good to see that they're looking to improve these. Now the reason I say that is because uh, I took, brought my Tesla here um, and a Tesla Model S or X isn't designed to charge on these, they're CCS connectors. So you have to use an adapter. So it took five goes to actually get, get the handshake, to get it to actually work and start charging. But each time uh, it attempted it, it put a charge of 60, it held 65 pounds on my debit card. You know, like a pre-authorization. Pre so I had five lots of 65 pounds held on my debit card, 
which was fine, uh, but not ideal. If I didn't have that money, I wouldn't have been able to charge or it could have left me short. It took about four or five days to be put back on the card. So with a car that's designed to charge here with the e-Golf, I wouldn't charge the e-Golf here normally. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, let's see how easy this one is. Right, considering these are super duper state of the art machines, uh, the screens are barely visible, but let's tap to get started. It's saying there, connect the car, so I'll just quickly do that. Okay, you might not be able to read that, but it says connection okay. I'm just gonna press start. It's asking me what I wanna do. So, so this is already much more complicated. Mobility contract, let's see if I can focus. Mobility contact or direct payment. So I'm gonna go with direct payment. Should I be doing uh, authorised payment? Let's get the ring on. Okay. It's not liking that. Let's try another way. See if I can get it to work with Apple Pay. I've got a beep. It's verifying. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of beeping. Can I move my hand or what? I'm going to leave it here. No, so I moved my hand away and it stopped beeping. So I'm gonna leave, <laughs> gonna leave my arm here and see if this works. I'll show you what's going on up there. You might be able to see that it says verifying. This charger is out of order. Great. So disappointingly, it wouldn't charge when I use the touch control on the screen. It kind of talked me through it with the app and I got to the point where it was scanning my card to make the payment but it just wouldn't scan the card. It had like, as you get the card in the right position, a green border appears around the card, but that, that didn't work either, even though I've got all the green border around. I then managed to pay a different way by PayPal. So um, they've held 67 pounds against my PayPal account, but it came up with this message, connection error. So I'm fairly sure that I can get the, this charger working. So out of the six that are here, the three that are being worked on are showing as unavailable. The three that aren't being worked on are showing as available. So I think it will work, but I've been here 10, 15 minutes, I'm cold, and I can't get a charge. So considering this is an, a flagship Ionity 350 kilowatt charger, faster than any Tesla charger in the UK, I can tell you that. The point is, they need to work. You need, well, it does work, it needs to connect. So I know that I'll be able to get this working, but I'm not gonna spend any more time doing it. The other thing I'd say is, unless you're in a car that can take the, this sort of charge, I wouldn't bother using Ionity. The reason I say that is because they're 72p per kilowatt hour. Sorry, 72p per kilowatt. So they are twice as expensive as Ionity. And if you're in something like I am today, which is our e-Golf, and this is important. So if you're new to EVs, find out how fast your car can charge on DC, on direct current. So this e-Golf is a brilliant car. It can take 40 kilowatts. So there's no point in me really plugging into a 350 watt kilowatt charger when uh, perhaps down the road is an InstaVolt at 50 kilowatts, which suits this car's charging needs. So an InstaVolt charger will charge this car as fast as um, an Ionity charger, but for half the price. I hope that makes sense. There's only so much this electricity this car can take. If, for instance, I was in an Audi e-tron or an iPace or a Tesla, that, or, or uh, what's the Porsche one? Oh, I've forgotten. I'm gonna have to try and remember or put it on the screen. Oh, it's gonna have to go on the screen. The Porsche can charge for brief periods of time uh, at 350 kilowatts. Um, so they're the sort of cars you want to be putting on these chargers. Nothing against cars that don't charge. The majority of cars in the UK probably may charge at 50 kilowatts. I love these cars, I love all EVs. But what I'm saying is don't waste your time and money on an Instavolt, on a, an Ionity charger, unless you really have to. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help the channel and spread the word about electric vehicles. So I got we got our first EVs in 2019 and 
things have moved on leaps and bounds in the last 18 months. So if you're thinking about getting an EV, I think now's the time. If, if it works for you, just go for it. Don't worry about public charging. We're finishing on a bad note, I know that, but I shouldn't worry too much about it. Just go for it. Anyway, I'll put some more videos around me and until next time. See you.